What's up, guys? It's Jimmy back with another funky funk. <clears throat> nope. <clears throat> that ain't it. Is there stuff on me? Uh. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Jimmy Make Music. Last week, we made some sound absorption panels. I'm going to put links around here and in the description if you want to check that out. But today, we're going to take a look at where to put your speakers in your studio and set them up for optimal performance with sound absorption panels. Or if you want to just get some better placement of your speakers in your space, this is a video for you. Stay tuned. Let's get to work. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy make music, make music, 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 music. So the first thing you want to really take a look at in your space is where you're going to set up. Usually you're in a square room, which is not really all that good for sound. If you can help it, try to get into a rectangular room. And you want to set your space up along the shortest wall. You want that long room behind you. That gives sound some space to not mess your ears up too much when you're mixing. Also on your desk area, take everything off, wherever your speakers are gonna be. You don't want things rattling around there. No one needs to know that you're the best dad ever. So, the first thing you wanna make sure of is to give your speaker some space from the rear wall. The wall that's behind your speakers, you're gonna want probably around six inches. If you can get even more than that, Great, but you don't want to be so far from the wall that it puts you in the center of the room because that might be just the worst spot in your space to be in when you're trying to mix or even just listen to music. To continue, you're going to want to put your speakers equal distance from the side walls. So if your right speaker is 24 inches from the right wall, you want to put your left speaker 24 inches from the left wall. That's a good place to start. Now that that's taken care of, you want to make sure that the speakers are equal distance from themselves and from your ears. Use a tape measure. A good way to kind of set these measurements up so that they're more accurate is mark the center of the speaker and use that center as a point so that just in case your speakers are turned any which way, you can always refer back to that center point. Now you want to measure from the center of your left speaker to the center of your right speaker and you want that distance to be the same as from your right speaker to your ear and your left speaker to your ear. So if it's 50 inches from the center of one speaker to the center of the other speaker, you want it to be 50 inches from the center of your right speaker to your ear and 50 inches from your left speaker to your ear. Using the center of the speaker is always a good way to kind of keep things on an even plane. You really want to get these measurements right because sound is predictable. So if you can control the space that the sound is in, the better hearing experience you're gonna have. That's really the basics of setting up your speakers. Also, try to get your speakers up off the work area. Uh, you don't have to buy fancy foam or speaker stands. I actually used some leftover packing foam, just enough to, to deaden the vibration of the speaker to the desk, because that'll create other sounds and disturbances to your ear while you're trying to mix or just listen to your instrument. The next part you wanna take care of are reflection zones. Now, what the hell is a reflection zone? Um, it's basically where sound will bounce off the walls. It's that simple. Sound comes out of your speakers, it hits the walls, it bounces around, and you don't want that. You want some direct sound right to your ear, and that's all you get. Once the sound starts bouncing around in your room, it's gonna do most likely one of two things. The sound's either going to get louder, so you're gonna actually pull down parts of your mix that don't need to be pulled down, then you go listen in the car and it's, it's too low. The other thing that can happen, which was my problem, is that the sound can filter itself out. So when a sound wave comes out of the speaker and bounces off the wall and comes back to your ear, it's meeting up with the sound coming from the speaker they can actually cancel each other out. That was my problem and my mixes were too loud. In the studio, I thought I had to bring all the levels up on certain sounds and then I go into my car and it'd be like, oh my God, it would be so loud, um, especially with low tones. So those are the two main things that, that could happen. Things are gonna get too loud or things are gonna be too soft. Let's take a look at how you can actually help that problem. First, you're gonna double check that your speaker placement is right, not just from distance from the wall, but you want the, the speakers to be turned ever so slightly so that the speaker on your right is hitting your right ear, left on your left, and line yourself up and your ear with the tweeter. 
I'm pointing to my speaker like you can see it, but you want to actually take either an imaginary line. I did it with a tape measure. That was fun. And make sure that tweeter is going right into your ear on both sides. Now where you're going to find your first reflection zone behind you is actually have an imaginary line or use a tape measure or string and go from the tweeter and go straight through your head to the back wall. That point, you're going to put a piece of tape and that's going to be your first reflection zone. That's where you're going to want to set up some kind of sound absorption. You're going to do that with both speakers to set up your first reflection zones behind you. Now you might ask yourself, ax, ax. You might ask yourself, how do I find the reflection zones on the sides of me? And that's actually kind of easy. What you're going to do, you're going to take a, and do is take a mirror, kaboom, like this, set it up or get someone to help you and just ride it along the side of the wall. If you don't have one that stands like this, you can just use a simple hand mirror that you stole from a Disney princess. Set that up that way. These are probably the easiest ones to use. Um, oh. Set it up along the wall, sit in your seat, have someone or you can move a standing mirror and just keep sliding it along the wall. If you can actually see a speaker from your sitting position, that is a reflection zone. So you're gonna to wanna to put a piece of tape there. That's where you're gonna set up a panel. You're gonna go all the way around the room like that. Um, you'll be surprised, it's not as much as you think. You might have to set up two on each wall. You have the ones behind you. Go ahead and mark your room. You're also gonna to wanna to get those zones behind your speakers. Don't forget behind your speakers. For some reason, a lot of people don't treat behind their speakers, but sound goes that way, man. You gotta treat behind it. Also, don't forget above you, all right? If you have it in your budget, get a make a cloud. It's a sound absorption that sits above you because you know if I put that mirror up there, I'm going to see both speakers. So it's almost an automatic. Just get something above you and below you. Put a carpet down. I have this lovely shag rug because I'm apparently Austin Powers. Anything, anything, you just get something on the ground to absorb it, especially if you have hardwood. So let's recap. You're going to set up on the small side of the room so that the largest space is behind you, hopefully in a rectangle. Do not sit yourself in the middle of the room. You're gonna measure from your right speaker to the right wall. Then you're gonna measure from your left speaker to the left wall. They should be the same, same measurement. Then you're gonna measure from the center of one speaker to the center of the next speaker, and that distance should be the same to your ear. So hypothetically, if it's 50 inches from one speaker to the next speaker, Make sure it's 50 inches from the speakers to your ear. You want to set up with the tweeters. Tweeters? Tweeters. Tweeter. It's like one of those words. It doesn't have any meaning after a while. Tweeter, 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 tweeter. Anyway, set up with the tweeter. Now that you have your speaker placement, you want to set up your absorption panels. Rule of thumb, start with the back. Make sure you have something behind your speakers absorbing that sound. The next step would be making some type of line using a string, laser pointer, something from your speaker to the back wall. Wherever it hits is a reflection zone. You need a sound absorption panel there. Then you're going to take a mirror, slide it along the wall, find out where your side reflections are because those are first points of reflection too. Put a point on the wall. That's where you're going to put a sound absorption panel above you. Now, if it's in your budget, you want a cloud, a sound absorption above the listening area. You also want something on the floor. Why am I talking like an ass? Let me wheel it back. You want something above you if you can. If it's in your budget, get that cloud up there, a sound absorption above your head. Um, just buy like a cheap carpet, throw it down. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to go to a super rug store. Just go to Target, get something, throw it down. And you should be good to go after that. Anything you add to that setup is just a bonus. It's going to absorb more low end. Um, things are going to sound more crisp. Don't be deterred if you have an odd shaped room. Do the best you can with what you got. I have this weird, awkward space in here. Um, it doesn't give me much trouble. Sound kind of gets caught in there. And I put a few panels using one as a bass trap. I really haven't had too many issues. Just setting your room up using these basic things is going to make your music sound better. It's going to make your mixes sound better. I, I guarantee you, it just, it just happens. Remember, sound is predictable, and if you can harness it, 
if you can control it a little bit, your mixes are going to sound better, your space is going to sound better, and overall, your music's going to sound better. I hope this video helped you out. If you liked it, give me a like, give me a sub, and don't forget to comment. All right, until the next one, guys. Take care. Jimmy, Jimmy, make music, make music, make music, music, music.